Marketer of the Day, Episode 627, How to Make a Passive Income Using Amazon ACX Audible Audiobooks. Hey there, welcome back. What is happening? This is Mr. Robert Plank. And if you have been a regular follower of the show, you might have noticed that we dropped off a little bit. And the reason for that is because I just felt like it. And no matter what you have going on, if you have a blog, podcast, YouTube channel, you might have heard that it's important to publish consistently, right? Put out those episodes every week, three times a week. And that's great if you can do it, but don't let that regularly released schedule stop you from doing things. And if you're bored, then that's totally okay. And so uh, we dropped off. We took a little bit of a break from the show for a little while, just like how all the best TV shows out there do that, right? They'll take the, the summer off or months off before coming back. And that's just because you should run a whenever lease show. You shouldn't let the idea that your podcast has to be weekly or has to be monthly hold you back from coming up with a podcast in the first place. I mean, a podcast can be just five, ten, one, two episodes. Uh, I have a, a podcast called the Membership Site Podcast, and it has just 25 episodes. So any website or book you have, you can just release a handful of episodes and say, that's all I'm going to do right now. There are no rules when it comes to podcasting. If you want to have a podcast, go ahead and go to podcastcrusher.com. But today, we're not talking about podcasting exactly. Well, maybe a little bit. We're talking about making money with your voice, which is a little related, similar to podcasting. What I'm talking about is a uh, a passive income method that's a way for you to fill up some extra time you might have during the day and generate a little bit, not a lot, a little bit of passive income, just being realistic with you here. And that's with using Amazon Audible ACX. It basically goes by three names. It's um, it's Amazon's audiobook marketplace. So if you haven't published on Amazon, let me just catch up here in 10 seconds. KDP.Amazon.com is the place for you to publish a digital book. And now it's easier than ever to do one click and turn it into a paperback book as well. But Amazon will let you more or less upload a Word document and then they'll print on demand. That will become your book and there's no upfront fee to that. Uh, they Amazon just takes a percentage. So if you have always wanted to be a published author, kdp.amazon.com is the place to go. And if you, you get there and you're so overwhelmed, you have no idea about pricing, formatting, how to make the cover, how to format the book then makeaproduct.com is our course for that. So Amazon will publish a digital book that people can read either on their Kindle tablets or on their Android phone or on their iPad. That's a digital book. And then they also have a program within there that used to be called CreateSpace, but now it's called KDP Paperback, where you can also publish a print book. But Amazon also allows you to publish an audiobook, so you speak out each chapter of your book, and it's available on their marketplace, which is called Audible. So maybe you have a subscription to Audible. It's about $15 a month, I think $14.99, and then you can get one credit, so more or less one audiobook per month, and that's a really good deal because if you remember, audiobooks used to cost $50 plus, right, when they were in a box of CDs or cassette tapes. Well, now it's all digital. So now it's just $15 per month. So Amazon's audiobook marketplace is called Audible. And the place for you to get that all set up is at acx.com. And so what I want to talk about specifically is how to make money as a narrator on Amazon ACX, because if you are an author, then you can, and one caveat is that in order to publish an audiobook, you have to already have at least a Kindle book 
available for sale. So let's say that you're an existing author and you have one Kindle book to your name. And even if that Kindle book is only 30 pages, well, then what you can do is one of two things. Option number one, you can get a decent enough microphone and record yourself speaking out each chapter. And then you can process that audio in a special way to fit Amazon's special requirements or pay someone to do the processing for you very cheaply. And then now you can sell your audiobook on Amazon. Now, option number two here for you is that you can take the audiobook that you have and you can basically hire someone for no money up front on ACX, which I think ACX stands for uh, like audio audiobook exchange or uh, something like that. Uh, I think it's like audiobook creation exchange. I'm scrambling at the moment to find the exact uh, acronym. I can't find it. So let's just say it stands for audiobook creation exchange. If you uh, disagree with me, shoot me an email, robert at robertplank.com. But anyway, so what you can do is as an existing author, you can post this job in the ACX marketplace. And you can say, I've got this really great book. It's called The Checklist Mindset by Robert Plank. And I'm looking to sell it as an audiobook. And I have it written, but I need a narrator to spend the time speaking it out and record using the special microphone and process it exactly and cut up the chapters and upload it and all that fun stuff. So I have the book, but I need it in audiobook form. So you can post this job. And you can then say, here's the entire book, just record you reading one of the pages or one of the chapters and send it over. Or you can say, here's a specific page of my book, and I want you to record it, and I want you to send in that audition. And this can apply to fiction or nonfiction books, but the only, like I said, the only catch is that you must already have a Kindle or paperback book. Uh, in Amazon's marketplace. And so that's pretty cool, right? Is that you can uh, publish a book for no money. Amazon just takes the cut. And then if you then want to hire a narrator, it's the same deal. You can either pay a narrator up front for cheaper than you might imagine, or you can split the royalty. It's called a royalty split. And that just means that when a sale comes in, you get 20% and that narrator gets 20%. So about maybe a dollar or two per sale. And all that money is extra money that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So that's kind of the the structure there, right? Of Amazon and ACX and how it is from the point of view of of an author. And uh, if you're a narrator, this is a great way for you to make a little bit of extra cashish, right? A little bit of extra cashola. And uh, I want to get you caught up and I want to tell you all about it uh, because I, I got my, my wife doing this because my wife wanted a little bit of extra money in the bank account. And I said, you know, here's my money. Here's your money. I, I, I'm newly married, so I don't know if I'm doing that correctly or not. But anyway, uh, I wanted to give her a few hundred extra dollars per month and for her to earn it. So I hooked her up with this uh, place called ACX, and I am having her uh, audition for a lot of different titles. And then out of all the, so basically you go to ACX and you search their marketplace and you narrow down what you want. You narrow down, do you want to narrate fiction, nonfiction, erotica, business stuff only? And so the nonfiction stuff is probably Uh, better to get started. And then you can narrow it down based on, well, do they want a a male or female narrator or do they not care? Or do they want an American accent or a British accent? So you can really narrow down in this directory, these lists of, they call them titles or books that are there. And then you can see what's in front of you and you can pick and choose uh, based on the amount that they pay, and you send in these auditions, right? You read from these these uh, one page or so, or one or two minutes worth of uh, speaking out their page, and then the 
rights holder, the author, then goes through all those auditions, and if they choose you, they send you an offer, and that offer might be that they split the royalty, so you get paid nothing up front, you only get paid based on how the book sells, or they might pay you a set dollar amount up front. So they might say, okay, well, for $700, I'll pay you to narrate this book for me within two weeks. So uh, you'll narrate the book first and then submit it. And then that author might want some changes to be made or some things to be added and you work it out with them. And then they will PayPal you. This is weird. They PayPal you or Venmo or send you a check. So they handle the money outside of Amazon and then you get paid and then they get their book. So it's a kind of a cool uh, interlinked, mutually assured destruction sort of system where the payment is handled outside of Amazon, but the, uh, the, the audios are delivered inside of Amazon, inside of ACX. So you go to acx.com, you go through this directory, you audition for different titles. If they choose you, that becomes more or less a contract. And then through Amazon, they send you the manuscript, the Word document containing their book. And then you speak out the different chapters and the credits and things like that uh, in your microphone and submit it and upload it and get it all configured uh, the way that it's going to sell when it becomes a live audiobook. So all those files are delivered within Amazon system, right? You as the worker deliver those files. Then the author looks at what you've delivered and says, okay, either I'll reject or approve this. So maybe they reject it and they want things changed. And so you might be thinking, well, if I'm a narrator for an audiobook, am I going to be narrating all these hours of content for this book? And then is the author going to say, fix this, fix this, fix this? They might, maybe. It usually doesn't happen, but they might be a perfectionist and say, keep changing this, keep changing that. So Amazon Audible ACX is a marketplace where you have to work with that client a little bit. But if someone is being a perfectionist and holding you up, it doesn't happen that often because it's to their detriment, right? If someone hires you for an audiobook and they say, keep making these changes, keep making these changes, well, then their audiobook is not selling and they haven't paid you yet, but they're stuck without an audiobook for sale. So you uh, you record these different chapters, you record these different audio files. So here's the audio file for chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. You submit this all within ACX's system. And then let's say that the author says, okay, great. I loved everything about it. They approve it. And then what happens at that point is if the contract that you both agreed to says that you are to be paid a set amount of money, then the author will then say, how do I get this money to you? And usually it's through PayPal. So then they click a button and they pay you based on that hourly rate. So if the contract agreed to you getting paid $100 per finished hour, and the book that you speak out is four hours long, then you'll, you get paid $400 through PayPal. And so let's think about this, what's happened so far. You've gone through ACX, the marketplace, you've auditioned for different titles, the author has chosen you, then they've sent you the manuscript, then you've spoken out these different chapters of the book, then you've submitted them, and then the author said, okay, I like what you've sent in, I approve. Then the author said, but at this point, the authors approve what you sent in. The book is not yet selling because the author then has to pay you money. So then the author pays you money. And let's say that at this point you flake. Let's, let's say at this point you say, okay, well, I've been paid money. I'm going to take the money and run. Well, it's again, to, it's screws over the author, right? Because now the the author doesn't have an audiobook to sell, but you've already done the work. So it's in your best interest. You want to have these good relationships to then say, yes, I received the money. 
Now I've got it. And once you receive the money, then you go back to Audible, ACX, and you say, yes, I approve, right? So the author approved my narration. And then you then, as the narrator, you approve that you have been paid. And then at that point, you're pretty much done. Then over the next few days, Amazon themselves will do a check and they'll make sure that everything is in proper order. And there's a few uh, just uh, things that need to be in place as far as uh, an Amazon ACX recording, like the, the noise floor has to be set at a certain level, if you know what that is. The uh, the peaks and valleys, the what's called the RMS needs to be in a certain way. There needs to be a certain pausing. So I think, I believe it's something like a, a one to five minute pause at the beginning of a chapter and then a 0.5 second to one second pause at the end. So there's a few little details like that. And uh, we don't have a course about that at this point, but if you really want one, shoot me an email at robert at robertplank.com. I'm really thinking about making a course like that. But if you're looking in general to make money from your voice, if you already have some audio equipment, then vosuccessformula.com is the place to find out how to make money with Fiverr. And um, so yeah, whether it's Fiverr or whether it's Amazon Audible ACX, there is money to be made freelancing, and in voiceover, and it doesn't mean that that it's necessarily beneath you. It does mean that you might have to charge a little less than what you, you're worth at first to establish yourself in one of these marketplaces like Fiverr or like ACX to get some repeat clients, and then you can tell those repeat clients that you're going to jack up your prices, and you might lose a few repeat clients, but the idea is, let's say, you get on one of these audio narration platforms and you put in, say, an hour a day and you get different offers and you audition for different authors and maybe uh, over time you build up 10 or 20 repeat clients and you're just working your tail off, totally maxed out time-wise. Maybe you get home from the nine to five, put in a couple of hours when you... uh when you get home and then you, you just fall asleep and you wake up and do another hour in the morning, you're totally maxed out on time. And you say, something's got to give. I'll double my rates. I'll increase my rates. And maybe you drop to maybe five clients. But those five clients pay really well. And ideally, that's extra money that either pays down some debt, pays off one or two bills, makes the car payment, makes the house payment. Ideally, at some point, exceeds your existing job but that's the process and a lot of people fail at freelancing because they don't see the bigger picture they they give up before they start because they don't even want to go through the journey or they start going through the journey without a plan and they say oh i'm i'm so tired i've been working 10 20 hours this week and we're thinking okay well don't look at it that way look at it as you're devoting one hour per morning or one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening to getting up and rolling, knowing that eventually you can scale back your hours, increase your rates and all that sort of stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, I think what I want to say about Amazon, ACX and Audible is well, let me just kind of now that I've given you a run through, let me quickly just uh, run through some questions or some issues you might have with this whole audio narration thing. So first of all, what equipment should you have? Uh, I'm currently talking to you through a Blue Yeti microphone. And with this audio narration stuff, you need to have a quiet-ish room. You need to, and you might've heard like a truck drive by a couple minutes ago. So if that was an audiobook narration, I probably would have deleted that chunk and then start it over, but we're podcasting here, so who cares? Who's checking our audio quality here? Nobody. My very first few hundred podcast episodes were from a Logitech ClearChat H390 headset, which only costs about $25. So to get started with at least podcasting, $25. But the problem with that cheapo headset, other than the audio quality sucked, is that 
they kept breaking about once a year. So I was paying $25 per year just for that same crappy headset. Eventually I said, I'll just get the Blue Yeti and I have both and I use the headset for listening. So that way if I wanna hear how something sounds, I'll do that. But I'm really looking into some better headphones because when I do an interview, the other end sort of echoes back through from the headphones into the Blue Yeti mic. So not ideal. But anyway, as far as the equipment, get a Blue Yeti, get a quiet-ish room. And then I use Audacity to record. So I used to use Camtasia Recorder for everything. I'm rec- I still record the podcast. I'm recording this on Camtasia Recorder right now. And then my podcast editor, Domingo, dumps the audio and then runs his magic. And the reason why I like Camtasia is that it can record everything. If I meet with someone on Skype, on Zoom, Camtasia records what's called the system audio. And then it gives us two audio tracks, right? Gives us the track of me talking, the track of the other person talking. We can blend, equalize all that. So I, that's why I use Camtasia for that. But for audiobook recording, I use Audacity, and here's why. You can record, 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 and then if you mess up, you can stop, and then you can go back and listen to the past 5, 10 seconds, and then delete that last chunk that you recorded, and then keep on going. And what I also like about Audacity is that if you have what are called plosive Ps, so I don't know if this is going to come up, but... If I talk real close to the microphone there, and if I, especially if I talk about products, I don't know if that worked, but it might have just sounded really crappy in the recording. And uh, with our dad, with Camtasia, I can't see what the waveform looks like. I can't see what the shape of the audio looks like, but in Audacity, I can. So if I mess up and I have the the poppy peas, the plosive peas in there, the pops, then I can see that and then delete that chunk and do it over. And um, there's a thing called a pop screen, which you can screw in front of your microphone, but that's a whole other thing. And, And in general, Audacity just lets you see things like that as you're recording and Camtasia doesn't. So equipment, a Blue Yeti to record, a quiet room, Audacity as the software, and then there are tutorials out there that will show you how to process your audio for ACX. But an alternative is to search on Fiverr for the term ACX, and you might be able to just take your audio and get someone else to uh, to go through and process it. And so there are there are so many opportunities available for you on the internet as far as lightly gently outsourcing and so for example someone the other day messaged me through acx and said hey we're a husband and wife team and we just enjoy editing and we'll edit your recording for ten dollars per finished hour if you just have markers in your audio or thirty dollars per finished hour if you need us to listen to to it all the way through. So think about that. If you enjoy recording, but not editing, you can record and then hire out the editing. It's usually a lot cheaper than you might think. So uh, yeah, but the problem with Audacity is that you have to kind of piece together lots of different tutorials to get the ACX processing to work. And that's why there's a need for a full-blown course to show how it's done. Uh, And it's really easy and just click around when you do it. But basically the process is you log into Amazon ACX. I'm doing that right now. And then we go to search and I'm searching for titles accepting auditions. And now I can choose gender, I'll choose male. You can choose compensation, so you can choose royalty share, or do they pay you a certain amount per finished hour? So here's the thing, is if I search for uh, someone who pays $100 per finished hour or higher, what that means is 
let's say that the length after you speak up the whole audiobook, the length of that is one hour. You get paid $100. If the length of their book is an hour and a half, you get paid $150. And so uh, I, the way I've heard some, uh, some other narrators explain it is that it takes them for absolute perfection. It takes them four hours of work for one hour of audio. So that means if they get paid $100 per finished hour, they're making $25 an hour because they do a lot of editing. Now, I think that you can edit a lot quick, more quickly, and especially if you edit as you go, I think you can probably edit with just 10% editing time. So I, I think that if you can land a job for $100 per finished hour, I hope my math is right on here, that's about $90 per hour for you. But the problem with ACX is that it's a little bit of slim picking. So if I search gender male and I search for fiction or nonfiction and I search for $100 per finished hour and up, I only get 12 titles. So that's 12 places to audition for, except for it looks like maybe four of those 12 are in German. And then it looks like about four of those are fiction. So if I didn't want to do fiction, I'd be a little bit out, out of luck there. Now, let me refine things a little bit more. And let me search for anything that is 50 to $100 per finished hour, 32. So now I have 32 places to audition to. And your results are going to be all over the place, but I found on average that uh, I would say that, let me find my exact numbers. So I have, right now I have 65 titles on Audible, and that's from 186 auditions. And that's over the course of about six months. So that means that I land about a third of the titles I auditioned for. And I I got started on this just because I wanted to see how well it paid out. And I'm not sure how closely I'm allowed to talk about my earnings, but I will say that it's a few hundred dollars a month for doing nothing. Right now, it's just money based on the those royalty splits that I took. And I, I made a little bit of money you know, a few months ago from just taking the money up front. And what's also great about Amazon is that they will also uh, deliver what's called a bounty. So a bounty means that if somebody joins Audible, if somebody signs up to Amazon Audible in order to buy a specific audiobook, then you get $50. Now, if you're a narrator and you've uh, do it with the royalty split, I believe you get about $25. So about $100 per month of income is just from those bounties. And then a couple hundred dollars a month, it, it varies a little bit, but uh, an extra 100 to $200 a month is just from those royalties. So again, I said at the beginning that it's not a lot of money, but it's decent money to pay off a bill or two. And if you keep at this and you treat it as a career, not like a job, then this is the thing that you can build up. And we tell our voiceover students in VOSuccessFormula.com to dedicate an hour every morning towards your voiceover business. Just keep it a, a constant dedicated thing. And that, mean during, that might mean during that hour that you actually fulfill some jobs that you audition to a few places, that you update your bio, your resume. That might mean that you set up some social media traffic, but whatever you do, devote at least an hour in the morning to getting things up and running. So that way, you're not playing the hourly income game. So that way, when you first get started and you're making $0 an hour, you know that you're just building the foundation. Maybe between you setting things up, auditioning, fulfilling some jobs. Maybe at first you're only making $10, $20 an hour, but don't think of it that way. Think of it that you're going to devote an hour per day in the morning 
And then you'll re-examine where your income's at in three months, knowing that anything above zero is good, knowing that you're not depending on this full time, knowing that even a little bit of extra money can help you pay off that debt faster, pay off that house faster, pay for that vacation without putting it on the credit card. So it's important to have that sort of mindset. Okay, so uh, so you go through these different uh, titles and actually let me look at the kind of lower paying jobs. So now we're going to look at zero to fifty dollars per finished hour. And now we have 68 titles. So there are 68 titles that I can audition for. And usually they'll pay about $35 or $40 per finished hour. So again, if it's a two-hour audiobook, you get paid about 90 bucks. And that's bad if you have bad time management, but that's great if you have good time management. So I'm looking right now, and there's a book that's called Stop Procrastinating, Proven Methods to Stop Procrastination, 1.1 hours that pays zero to 50 per finished hour. The word count is 10,000, so it'll be about um, 1.1 hours, we just said. So we would uh, go to the audition tab for that. We would look at, so it looks like in this case, he attached the whole book, not just one page. And we'd go and we'd say, We'd uh, start a recorder. And we'd say, introduction, beat procrastination effectively. This book is a short guide and blah, blah, blah. And we'd read about a page. We'd save it. We'd process it. And then we would send that audition clip we recorded through ACX's system. And we're allowed to attach a quick message there. So your message could say, I can deliver this in seven days. I'll start on this today. My rate is $40 per finished hour. Uh, and so you can add in little things to make it unique and you can customize it a little bit to say, well, I've checked out your other uh, your other books. Or you can add in extra goodies. So uh, there's a podcast I want to send you to and it's at vosuccessformula.com forward slash blog forward slash zero zero seven so think like james bond goldeneye bio success formula dot com blog 007 with alan logue and alan logue talks more about amazon audible acx and he says that what he likes to do is he auditions for these books he he you know goes and does his searching and narrow down to the title he wants records the clip, sends it in, but he says, I'll post a link to this book once a month for 12 months to my fan page of 20,000 people, or I'm a member of 50 different audiobook Facebook groups. I'll submit a link to this audiobook once it's live to all these groups. Or he might say, I have an email list of 10,000 people I'll send an I'll write and send an email blast promoting this book. Or he might say, I have a Twitter following of 25,000 people. I'll tweet this once a week and hashtag it in order to get you more traffic. Or he might say, I have a podcast where I interview productivity authors. I interview fiction authors. And I'll have you on and interview about the book. Or he might say, You know, I have a a podcast where I review books of all different kinds and I'll review, I'll do a 30 minute review of your book. So you can always add in extra things to sweeten the deal and stand out and do a little bit of the marketing for that person. So that's a way that you can stand out. Uh, And so, yeah, you go through this directory, you do your auditions and let me do one other thing for fun here. So basically, let, let's say that you auditioned for the Stop Procrastinating book, right? And you said, I'll do the, a couple things for you. And he says, sure. They send you an offer. Now, the offer might be $40 per finished hour. And it's always calculated based on the total amount of time that the book actually takes. So this way, someone can't say, oh, it's only one hour. And then you narrate it and it's four hours because if it's four hours, you get paid more. You get paid 
per that finished hour. So uh, depending on if the if the final audio you record is longer, you get paid more, right? You don't get paid for your time, but you get paid for how long the finished book is, if that makes sense. So let's say that Mark Robbins of the book Stop Procrastinating chooses to hire me. He'll send me an offer that says, do you agree to $40 per finished hour? I'll say yes. And also the offer says you'll finish the book by such and such time. So I'll say yes. And then what happens is then uh, he sends me the manuscript, they call it, right? The inside of the book. Now, once he sends me that, I record the opening credits. So uh, they, there's a special page on Amazon where they say, read this. And that you'll be like, stop procrastinating by Mark Robbins. Production copyright, Mark Robbins. Narrated by Robert Plank. That will be the uh, a quick 30-second file that's called the opening credits. And then you open up their book, usually a Word document or a PDF, and then there'll usually be an introduction chapter. So you click record and you say introduction. And then you read out those wor- uh, that the words on the page word for word. And maybe you'll uh, do a little bit of voice acting if you want, but you read that and you click, uh, you know, stop or save. Then the next, uh, after a few pages, it might say chapter one, blah, blah, blah. So you click record again and you say chapter one, getting started uh, or how to end procrastination. And then you read chapter one. You read it all the way through and you stop. Well, at some point, you're going to have read at least 15 minutes worth of material. So let's say you recorded 15, 20 minutes of material from the book. You click save. You process the audio through uh, using Audacity, using the special ACX specifications. And then you bundle it up into one single audio MP3 file and you send it in. So you get sent the book and you must record the first 15 minutes or so and then send it to the author for approval before you can keep going because they just, Amazon doesn't want you to spend five hours reading this whole book and then the author says, I don't like your squeaky voice or I don't like the pace at which you read the book or I don't like your microphone. So you send in this 15, 20 minutes and almost always they'll approve. The only time I didn't have that first 15 minutes approved was when I was reading too fast. And then the author said, well, slow way down. And now I sort of have an audiobook narrator voice where I speak even more slowly than I would presenting or even more slowly than I would reading a short voiceover. And the reason is that if an audiobook is under an hour, then the, the, the rights holder, the author, will only get a certain amount of money. If the narration is over an hour, they'll get a tiny bit more. If it's over three hours, they'll get a tiny bit more per sale. So these authors, they usually want you to narrate a book that's over an hour, or if, it's, if it can be close to three hours, they'll have you narrate that. So anyway, you send in that first 15 minutes, then they approve you, and then you go back and you record the rest of these chapters. And then when you've done your recording, you go through and process it in a special way, and then you upload each chapter individually in ACX's system, and that includes that the, those opening credits, that includes the introduction, that includes different chapters, There's a section where you have what are called closing credits, where basically you say, this has been the Stop Procrastinating book, written by Mark Robbins. It's narrated by Robert Plank. Production copyright 2019, Mark Robbins. And so you send in that file, and then you also attach what's called a retail audio sample, and that's about a five-minute clip of the book. And the author might say, there, here's some special text for you to read as the sample, but it might just be you grab a random chapter that's less than five minutes or take a clip and you slap it in there. So 
to recap, you go to uh, ACX's directory, you choose some titles to audition for. If they choose you, and they might only choose one out of three or one out of four or one out of five, and then if they choose you, then they'll send you an offer saying, we'll pay you this amount of money, we'll pay you this many dollars to talk in five-year-old terms, and then if you accept, then they'll send you the manuscript, and you'll record the first 15 minutes, you'll send that in, if they accept that, you can keep going and record each and every chapter. Then you upload those and you say, I'm done. You submit that. Then the author says, do I approve or disapprove? If they approve, then you work out between each other how you get paid. After you get paid, then you say, I've been paid and I unlock the book for you to sell. And then the next few days, Amazon goes through and has their engineers do an audio check. And then you might go and you might have to take out like a mouse click, right? There might be like a something like that that you need to remove. And so they'll tell you what to fix there. And it's one of those things where your first couple of audiobooks, you might have things you forgot or messed up on. But the more you do it, the better you get, the less mistakes you make, the faster you work, and the more fun you'll have. And so you might have noticed from me throwing out some numbers there that it's there's a little bit of a, a catch-22 because you want to get paid what you're worth and it's definitely worth your effort to uh, to audition and send things in for the highest rate possible but you heard me say that for the high price stuff it's kind of slim pickings and then we went to the really low price stuff where it's zero through fifty and there's 68 titles. And so th that's where you get paid up front. But there's also a thing called royalty share. And so there were 68 low paying uh, $50 or less per finished hour books in the directory. There's 507 royalty share books. And so what does royalty share books mean? Well, it means that same thing. You find the book, you audition. If they choose you, you record 15 minutes and then the things, but you might do a lot of work. You might, you know, put in a few hours of work for nothing. The book might not sell. The book might sell one copy. And we said that you get paid maybe a dollar or two per sale of, of a book. So you might do all this work and it's a little bit of a gamble on your part because the book might not sell at all. But it might sell consistently. And I, I've narrated her books that have sold hundreds of copies just in the pa past few months so far. So that's consistent money every single month. And so what you can do is click through to the, the page where someone's offering a royalty share deal. And you can make a little bit of a judgment call. So for example, there... Uh, the, the rights holder might say, well, we promote it on social media or we're going to run Facebook ads. You might factor that in and say, okay, well, this book's a royalty share book, but I'll gamble on it because they say that they're going to be promoting it. I'm looking at a book right now that's called 33 Tips for Public Speaking, and its Amazon sales rank is 3.7 million. So it's not really flying off the shelves. If it was 100,000 or less, I'd jump on it. But also, it has four ratings. And I mean, four ratings is it's not a lot, but I know that it sells a little bit. So I'd expect it to sell a handful per month. Now, is that worth your while to get paid a handful of dollars per month? Well, it is if it sells for years and years to come. So if there are these royalty share books where you might just want to take a few royalty share jobs just to get a few titles under your belt and to get better at it and uh, to kind of get the process figured out. Or you might take a royalty share job because it's only one hour or it's only two hours of narration. And remember that you get paid if someone signs up to Audible just to listen to that book, if someone takes up that free Audible trial. So that might be worth it. 
And it, it must might be worth it if you narrate the book and then you help out with some of the promotion. We mentioned earlier that you could uh, men, you know, review it on a podcast. You could submit it to free Facebook groups. You could blast it to your own social media following or mail for it. So another way of looking at Amazon audiobooks is that you can basically sign up to be the only affiliate for this audiobook that you didn't have to create. You just spoke it out. And so we had a guy on the show named Dave Koziel years ago. And you can find that episode at robertplank.com slash 081. And he built up a pretty decent monthly income of a few thousand dollars a month from about 65 different uh, Amazon books. And he had them on Kindle, uh, Create Space, the paperback edition, and uh, audio and Audible. And so a way for you to think of this is what if you had a hundred audiobooks? Not right away, but what if you just worked on, you know, one a month, one a week, and eventually you had a hundred audiobooks that with your name or with your name on them as the narrator. So someone else wrote them, but you spoke them out. What's well, a hundred different ways for someone to click and buy or sign up for Audible or have the bounty or Someone can, or you just have all having all these credits to your name. So, uh, and the way that the royalty share works is that Amazon sends you a check every month. So, what's what's uh, good about doing an audiobook up front is you get paid up front, but then that's it, right? So, you might speak out a book and get paid a few hundred dollars, and then that's the end of that. And that's mostly what I set up my wife with. I set her up with. Some of the girly stuff, uh, mostly cookbooks, because cookbooks, man, they are some of the easiest stuff to to speak out. So, you know, talking about adding a, a tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, um, instant pot recipes, ketogenic crock pot recipes, and you're done in a couple of hours, you get paid a couple hundred bucks, easy money, right? And she and Joey's doing them, and we get some meal ideas for them. And you might even be looking into audiobooks just for your own personal enrichment, right? I mean, you always hear that readers are leaders. So what if you went on ACX and if you were already a budding voice actor anyway, and you wanted to get some credits under your belt and earn a little bit of money, but there are also some subjects that you wanted to know more about, like decluttering or time management or a confidence, well, if there were books that you were going to read anyway, why not read them out loud and get paid money for that? And uh, and and yeah, so th- there is clarity in speaking out your thoughts and just kind of slowing down and speaking out what's in front of you. It's why, why I do podcasting. It's why I do a little bit of the narration and it's pretty easy money. So I would definitely check out ACX and I would check out VOSuccessFormula.com so that way you can get up and running on Fiverr. And I think that the secret here, and this is something that a big takeaway I learned from a book I recently published, which is called Marketer of the Day Book.com. It's on Audible as well. Uh, I got. 17 of my best favorite podcast guests together, and we wrote a book together. And I spoke it out, and there were lots of different takeaways from people who are talking about uh, getting the most out of your morning, waking up early, succeeding in business. And the thing that has stuck with me for the last several weeks is to not be beholden to a few clients. So if you don't have high paying clients, then you're basically scrambling every single month. If you don't have high paying clients, if you're just setting up websites for fun, you're unemployed. And I'm sorry to say that to you, but if you have zero streams of income, you are not employed. And that's okay. You might be building your business, but it's time to get a move on to have some deadlines, a sense of urgency. But if you can land a couple of high ticket clients, or even one 
that's easy money, right? So let's say that you were paid $3,000 a month to meet with someone once a week for an hour and talk about their marketing or write their web pages for them or format their Kindle books for them or write their sales letters for them, who knows what. But if you can get even one or two people like that, then it only takes one hour out of your week. Why wouldn't you do that? Because now you can take some of the pressure off yourself. Now your business is self-funding and then you can funnel that money that you earn into other things, right? Hire some programmers to make an app. Hire some salespeople. Who knows what? But having one or two high ticket clients is ideal. But here's the drawback to that is if you have one or two clients, now you're not unemployed, but now you're employed, right? Now you kind of have a job. Why do you have a job? Because if one of those clients says I quit, now your income is cut in half. If one of those clients says, I want all this extra stuff from you, you really don't have a choice. You have to give it to them. If one of your clients says, I don't want to pay you this month, or I want to pay you half what I'm paying you, if those are your only sources of income, you might have to give in. And so in a way, you're working for those one or two people. Now, if you can get yourself a handful of clients, now you are truly self-employed. Now you have true freedom because let's say one of those clients is a total pain in the butt, right? Dan Kennedy says that if I wake up thinking about a client three times, then I need to fire that client. And he gets a little dirty with his saying. I think it's like if I'm if I wake up three times thinking about that client and I'm not sleeping with them, they need to go. But I mean, you get what he's trying to say is that if a client's always on your mind in a bad way, then you should fire them. I mean, life's too short not to be happy. So if a client is a pain in the butt or wants extra stuff or wants to pay you less, you can say, see you later, right? Or if you want to increase your prices and you can say, you know, I have five recurring clients right now. And it's just a lot of work for me and I want to double my rates and I know that I'll lose two of them. I'll still come out ahead. I'll still get double the money for the same amount of work. So having a handful of clients is true freedom. And the way to get that true freedom is to have every bucket full. And that means that there might be some people that you need to be talking to who have just discovered you, who just uh, got to know you. There are some people that you need to be talking to that you have just sent a proposal to. There are some people that you need to be talking to that are just getting up and running with you and uh, you're getting that first little bit of work done with them and others where you they've been with you for years. And if all this sounds overwhelming, good. If, if it sounds overwhelming, that means that you should be hiring someone to help you out with some of the work so that way you can focus on those high level tasks. So the idea here is to have so much going on, to have so much money coming in, to have so many clients that you're so busy that you have to hire out a lot of the work. And that way you're the, the middleman, that way you're just the per person pushing buttons. And then you have the freedom to focus on the business that you want to focus on. If you want to focus on the lead generation, the follow-up, the, the marketing, the sales, whichever part, you can choose to focus on those sorts of things as long as you are a business owner and not a freelance worker. As long as you're a voiceover business person and not a voiceover artist. Now, what's an artist? An artist is someone that's, I mean, let me look up the exact definition, but an, an artist is someone that, uh, you know, works by, by their whimsy. Okay. A person who produces paintings or drawings as a profession or a hobby. So a sculptor, novelist, poet, filmmaker. And that sounds like someone who has a real roller coaster income, right? Who has no real plan. But if you're a voiceover business person, then you can have very predictable results. You can say, I'm putting in my one hour every morning. And at first I'm trying out different things. 
But if the Upwork income is picking up and you can find out about Upwork at voupstart.com, you focus more on that. If the Fiverr work picks up, you can go to vosuccessformula.com and focus more on the Fiverr work. Or maybe the audio narration uh, works out. But as far as this, this audiobook stuff or this narration stuff, uh, I had a guy who contacted me and wanted me to uh, narrate a book of his. And I think it was three hours long at, at the most. And I made $1,000 from that, just from two hours of work. And... I've narrated the royalty share stuff. I've narrated the upfront stuff on ACX. And I think it's important to have a mix of both. And what's really interesting is that on, on ACX, once you get a few titles under your belt, if if you're, let's say you're an aspiring actor, right? We have a few people in our VO Success Formula program who wanted to be actors, but then they they got practical and they said, well, you know, I'm not going to be like a Brad Pitt or a Barry Watson, but I can I can narrate voices. And some of these people have narrated stuff for cartoons. But let's say that it's always been your dream to be an actor. But then you said, you know, I don't want to move to Los Angeles or audition, but I want to do some voices. Well, there are tons and tons of fiction titles on ACX that are posted from established authors. But the only catch is that some of them are royalty shares. So if I search for just fiction, there are 327 titles uh, in ACX. And you know what? There's a secret to ACX, which I told myself I wouldn't reveal, but I will. It's you look at the covers. If a cover on Amazon ACX looks professionally made, then audition for it. And I'm scrolling through a couple, and I found one the other day from a guy that he wrote most of the Dune books. Have you ever heard of the book Dune, like Frank Herbert? Well, I guess there are a couple of authors who really like wrote 10 or 20 books set in the Dune universe. And people like that, they post a job that's royalty share, but you go and look at the ranking and it's like 50,000 ranking, which is really good on Amazon. So you can see that it's they're an established author and it's fiction. So if it's a, it's, if it's a nonfiction book, it'll probably be about one to three hours in length. If it's a fiction book, it'll be seven to 10 hours, sometimes up to 20 hours in length. So that's why I say fiction is more advanced, but some of these fiction authors on Amazon, on Audible, they have a huge following. They have rabid fans. They are selling tons and tons of books. So it's worth throwing your hat in the ring if you enjoy the voices, by the way, my, my wife doesn't enjoy the voices at all, but that's why you can choose what you want to do. So like there, there's someone who, um, who said, and sometimes they say things like, well, this book has 10 ratings. It's sold 216 copies since April. So sometimes they'll share with you their sales numbers. And yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of searching through and finding some uh, some books that catch my attention. So there's there's one that is an amazing stories book. And so if you've ever heard of like the Amazing Stories brand, I think that's Steven Spielberg. There used to be a TV show about it in the eighties. So the the ranking is super low. There it has no ratings. But it's an established brand, so it's worth putting your hat in the ring for a seven-hour royalty share book because you know that it's going to sell at least a few hundred dollars worth, probably more over time. So you can go through and try out different things and then kind of have fun narrating for these different audiobooks. There's so many to choose from, but I think a good idea for you is to at least get set up on Amazon ACX, at least audition for a few 
jobs that are either 0 to 50 PFH, about one or two hours each, and then some more jobs that are 50 to $100 PFH that are about one to two hours each. That way you can get the, the hang of it and try out a few people. And then if you're bored with that, move on to some royalty share. And if you get bored with that, move on to some fiction and get just a, a wide, varied portfolio that you can show people. You can say, I've narrated all these books. I've narrated business books. I've narrated fiction books. I've narrated short and long books, books with, with multiple characters. But my point of all this is for you to be a voiceover business person and not a voiceover artist, there's two people I want you to model. One person is named Troy Hudson, who's in our VO Success Formula program at VOSuccessFormula.com. And his attitude is he's set up on 20 different platforms. So he's set up on Voice Bunny, Voices 123, Fiverr, Upwork, Audible. He's on all these platforms and he keeps them all more or less up to date. And he gets jobs from all of the above. And he might spend a Saturday morning fixing up his Upwork profile. He might spend his Monday afternoon auditioning for some ACX stuff. So he chooses where to focus his attention, knowing that he's keeping all these things alive, knowing that if one platform, one source of income really increases one month, then he'll focus on that. But he has no problem logging on to Amazon ACX and sending in 20 auditions, knowing that he'll get four or five offers back and then he can choose the one or two that he wants to work on that month. And I think it's a good idea if you're waiting for your ship to come in, if you're waiting for your freelance income or your voiceover income to build up, to at least spend an hour per morning just narrating an audiobook and just have one audiobook per month that you chip away a little bit of over time. And so I'm looking right now. There is a fiction book, 9.2 hours, royalty share, that has 161 ratings. And that's on the, the print book, on the non-audio book. So you can find some of these hidden gems where who knows if you'll actually get the part, but you can at least send in your audition. And you send in enough auditions, you'll get enough parts, maybe not at first for the rate that you want, but you build up enough of an established presence and then you can get to where you want to go. And the second person to model is one of our favorite people named Robbie LeBlanc. And Robbie, he is a, a wizard, a master at playing the guitar. You can find him on Facebook. He always live streams and takes song requests. But And I think he has a band. But, I mean, how many people out there actually succeed in a career in a band as a musician, not a lot. Some people are just in it for, for fun. So a lot of these people who are musicians or former DJs or stand-up comedians or voice actors or wannabe actors, they have used voiceover to find a way to pursue their passion and make money from it. And it might be a case of you know, maybe they tried when they were in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Now they're in their 60s and they're like, well, I'm not going to make it as a Hollywood actor, but I can make it as a voice actor. Some people still have their lives ahead of them. And they say, you know, instead of waiting tables, I'm going to do this thing that's fun. And maybe I'll make some connections that will lead to hitting it big with the comedian stuff or hitting it big with the voiceover stuff. I mean, we, um, my wife just, my wife has no illusions of, be getting a career in voice acting, but she narrated for Hot Dog on a Stick the other day. We have people in our group who narrated for Airbnb, places like that. So these places are hiring on some of these freelancer sites, and ACX Audible is a good way to get your feet wet and to get those handful of recurring clients. That way you're not unemployed, that way you're not employed. That way you are self-employed. So remember to go to VOSuccessFormula.com to check out how you can earn a living. It's up to you, though. Narrating with your voice 
And check out our brand new book called marketerofthedaybook.com where you can hear from some of the best guests on the show. You can get it in Kindle form. You can get it in paperback form. You can get it in audible book form. Just go to marketerofthedaybook.com. It'll take you to Amazon and you can choose which format you want to buy it in. You'll love it. Marketerofthedaybook.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I'm bringing it back whenever I dang well feel like it. I hope that you have the same attitude for your podcast because it is your show. I'm Robert Plank, marketerofthedaycom Thanks and bye now. Thank you for listening to Marketer of the Day. Subscribe and listen to other shows at marketerofthedaycom slash episodes.